Uh, I'm hosting the National Unity Platform Leader on National Matters, Uganda's Economic Outlook for Financial Year 2022-2023. And of course, he's here to explain to us the contentions in the NUP leadership. Of course, a few weeks ago before this morning, NUP has been gazed at in a number of political agenda settings, the allegations of the 40 million handout to some NUP MPs and many more talks that seemingly look to be putting the party in contention with public opinion. Today, and this very moment, we are privileged to be having the principal himself, Honorable Robert Chagorani Sentamu, the leader for NUP, to iron out some of these contentious issues that surround the party with majority opposition MPs in the current 11th parliament. Good morning to you, Honorable Chagorani. Good morning. How are you doing, Priscilla? Very good. How are you? Well, I'm alive, thank God. Okay. Yeah. First question. Were you considerate of the sun rising when you're building your house? Well, um, I wouldn't really say I looked at that, but uh, with my friends, we just looked at where we would be facing mm -hmm. and, you know, everything else I just fell in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Matoke or posho? Matoke. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Beef or chicken? Chicken. Okay. Rice or cassava? Cassava, <laughs> but not this, this recent one. <laughs> okay, all right. It's cassava too, regardless of the cost and the price of the cassava right yeah. now. Now, welcome back from Europe. Um, looking relaxed right now. Thank we you. want to find out what were your adventures like in Europe, both political and social? Well, um, it was a diverse uh, approach. I was in Senegal, I was in Germany, I was in Holland, and I was in Italy. Uh, there were different missions. However, by and large, we go to the international community, we go abroad to widen the spectrum, to, you know, uh, seek for these strategic uh, alliances and uh, partnerships in uh, our liberation, but mm -hmm. even beyond our liberation, developing Uganda and fitting Uganda in the international community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, all right. And from those uh, trips that you had across Europe, we have been seeing pictures of you with former leaders from Botswana, South Africa, former Prime Minister of Israel. What were those particular meetings about with those leaders in regards to what you're talking about in liberation? Well, like I said, Uganda is not living in isolation. We are part of the global community. <laughs> so it's important that we fit in and fit in right. But most importantly, um, in the case of Uganda, considering where we are, it was uh, priceless to be uh, linking up with these noble leaders. Remember, these are not just, I'm not just meeting world dictators, mm -hmm. because while the world has good leaders, it has terrible leaders too, mm -hmm. but we, we were meeting with uh, Democrats, with leaders that uh, are celebrated in their countries, and the world over, leaders that have developed, led their countries, developed their countries, mm -hmm. but most importantly, looked at their countries uh, as bigger than themselves. Uh, we were meeting the former Prime Minister of Israel, former Presidents of South Africa, of uh, Botswana, um, former Prime Minister of Ethiopia, and many others. So it was uh, a good partnership. I won't, uh, you know, say all that we discussed, but uh, the people of Uganda should know that all of that is in the interest of, one, the liberation of Uganda, and beyond its liberation. Okay. Yeah. All right. And we also have been seeing you attending different summits across the world, uh, some of which have been human rights related. So briefly yeah. tell us about the meetings and the outcomes of them in regards to human rights observations. Well, in Senegal, uh, it was uh, a young people uh, meet, uh, you know, a liberal youths, uh, young people all over the world meet, and they meet uh, because they share ideas before, because they share liberal values. So these were young people from all over Africa, and we went to make our case. Of course, on the sidelines, there was what they called a night. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm privileged to be that, besides being a political leader, I'm also a musician, and uh, some young people look at me as an inspirational figure. So every time I get an opportunity to share uh, the state of affairs here in Uganda and also share my thoughts with them, um, for the benefit of their countries, I do that. So that was in Senegal, then uh, in Germany, we had uh, the uh, International Media Forum, and I was uh, speaking from the perspective of an artist. And you, as you will re realize that the, 
uh, art is a very, very, very big factor, is a very big uh, power, and uh, artists are well listened to. So we are meeting with various artists from across the globe to discuss the same, to see the impact, to analyze the impact of arts and entertainment in uh, the pursuit of freedom and development uh, of countries. Okay. Yeah, and from there we, of course, had our NUP conference in uh, Holland. Um, after that, I was uh, having a conference of world leaders in Italy, uh, Lake Como. Okay. Yeah. All right. Could you tell us about some of the artists that you actually interacted with that are using art to bring and, you know, make noise about freedom, extend freedom to the masses? Well, we're meeting artists, writers, photographers, uh, poets, uh, filmmakers from Nigeria, from uh, Cameroon, mm -hmm. from Sudan, from uh, Europe, from all over the world. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, critics have also remained skeptical on the people that have been escorting you to some of these summits. For example, Chairman Nyanzi in the Geneva summit, which was seen as a sign of attractive trends like nepotism. Which is your response to skepticism on competence of people that you walk in in tandem with? Allow me to take a sip. Oh, please do. Now, um, I hear the criticism. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, Critics have been skeptical right from me myself. They don't believe I should be the one who is talking to you because I'm just a ghetto youth. I'm just, uh, I've just been in this political uh, engagement for just four years. I'm, I'm a ghetto youth. Um, they look at me as a mayor. So they believe that I shouldn't be the Chagulani. Mm -hmm. It should be another Chagulani. However, I did not show up to represent just the intellectuals. I showed up to represent everybody. You know, I'm one of the least expected. Now, now that people gave me opportunity to articulate issues, I believe everybody deserves opportunity. Um, <clears throat> of course, uh, like I've been saying, politics and uh, things of thinking for ourselves, we are seen as a preserve of those so-called intellectuals in straight jackets and all that. But that's not the case with me. First, uh, when I went to... Uh, um, you know, Dakar in Senegal, I went with our Secretary General, uh, David Lewis Lubongoya, and I went with Nubian Lee because we had uh, the uh, IFLORI, or International uh, Liberal Values Youth um, Engagement, mm -hmm. and there we attended with the Secretary General of our party, and later on, the night with Bobby Wine, because I was performing, as you must have seen it, I was with Nubian Lee. Now, I wonder who didn't qualify to be there. You know, in Bonn, Germany, I went as an artist and I was going to perform and I carried along somebody that would give me a positive vibe to perform and I hope you liked the performance. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in Holland, I was there with my deputy president uh, for Northern Uganda, uh, Dr. Lina Zedriga Waru. I was there with two members of parliament, uh, the Honorable Mkunyinji Mwada, who replaced me as MP for Chad on the East, who is my minister for uh, international affairs. Mm -hmm. I, I had uh, the Honorable Derek Nyeko, who is MP for Makindi, and also my Minister for Presidency. I had uh, the spokesperson of our party, the deputy spokesperson of our party, uh, Mr. Alex Waiswa Mufumbiro. I had the, uh, mobil the head of mobilization of our party, uh, Nyanzi Fred, and I was performing. I had uh, uh, Nubian Lee, who is the head of arts and entertainment in our party, and also my performing partners. And of course, many other leaders, uh, the mayors and all that. So I wonder who the critics think did not qualify to be with me there. But in, nevertheless, I am not going to do what my critics think, because our critics are our critics anyway. Mm -hmm. So we don't run our party or our affairs according to their interests. We run our party according to us. And also, mm -hmm. while we are open to open criticism. I want you to know that I despise classism. I despise those people who think, oh, you should go with this and you don't go with this. No. For example, I carried uh, Nakwede Harriet with me to Holland because I believed that as a strong, solid leader, but most importantly, as a rural woman, mm -hmm. she had a lot to speak. She would speak for that rural woman from Kayunga more directly and more effectively than the 
let me use your example, than the Priscilla's of this world. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it doesn't matter what the critics think, for as long as we touch where we want to touch. That is how we've been able to, to, to destabilize Museveni, mm -hmm. and we will continue doing our things our way not their way. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of President Museveni, last month on the 29th, he had a meeting with the Human Rights Watch team, and that is after days they, they had released a 2021 rights report, uh, which was compiled by the Uganda Human Rights Commission, and it was painting a grim picture of torture in this country, Uganda. Uh, the president himself, in his words, said that the cases of illegal detention, torture, and human rights violations will not be tolerated. As one who has been crazy for respect to human rights. What's your comment on this? I wonder why anybody in their right senses would listen to Museveni. Nobody in their right senses should listen to Museveni. Of course, he never means what he says and never says what he means. Mm -hmm. And that has not started today. It started way in the 70s. I mean, this is the same Museveni that celebrated the mass murder of people. It's the same as seven that tapped on the shoulders on the backs of the uh, these soldiers after deploying them to massacre people. This is the same as seven that ordered his son, that empowered his son to kill people. And this is the same seven that has usurped all the powers of the institutions. Look at the, uh, the Uganda Human Rights Commission. It's not anything to, to talk about. I mean, May his soul rest in peace, but the former uh, chairperson of the Uganda Human Rights uh, Co uh, Commission actually told me face to face, he said, man, we are living under dictatorship. Very sad that after a very short while after he told me that, he died also under suspicious circumstances. Now, the current head of Uganda Human Rights Commission came out after the torture of Kakwenza, after the torture of Maserika and many other people. She came out and said, oh, the media is exaggerating our torture cases. So just don't tell me about the Uganda Human Rights Commission. We view things from the area of view now, not from, from the, from the uh, single view of the, the institution of Uganda Human Rights Commission, which is completely powerless. Yeah. Okay. Let's go into the 11th Parliament. The National Unity Platform has majority number of opposition MPs in the 11th Parliament. Now, last month, rumors circulated that some MPs from NUP received about 40 million Ugandan shillings. It was a handout, so to say. And then the rumor became vivid with the party coming out to say that the 40 million should be taken back. And there was a terms and conditions within 48 hours, if not stringent measures would actually be implemented. So clarify on whether this was fulfilled and also what is the current stake of the party on this matter onwards? Okay, first of all, I want us to be honest. That was not a rumor. It was a reality. Of course, it started out as a, a rumor, but at this date, if I say it's a, it's a rumor, I'll be dishonest. It's a reality. When we first heard about it, I summoned uh, our parliamentary team. Mm -hmm. and uh, ask them about the same. And yes, like uh, Watima said, uh, some of our MPs actually, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, told us that they had received that money. Let me ask, how did they receive that money? Well, thank you very much for asking that. First of all, it was not just NUP members. It was all members of parliament. Mm -hmm. Like General Museveni has been doing, you know, uh, bribing whenever he wants to pass something immoral and illegal and anti-people. He bribes the members of parliament. You remember when he wanted to change the constitution and scrap off the age limit, he paid MPs five million each. When he wanted to uh, change the constitution and uh, uh, remove uh, you know, the age limit, he bribed all of us with 29 million hours in the 10th parliament. Of course, some of us uh, you know, returned it openly. Mm -hmm. Now, this time around, after passing that uh, questionable supplementary budget, and of course, because we know that he's pursuing some other anti-people agenda, he had to, you know, bribe members of parliament with 40 million shillings. Now, to make it even more immoral, this money was not, one, the, it was not tagged to anything. Back then, when they gave us 29 million, they said, oh, you're going to consult voters. But this was not named anything. 
And not only that, it was not even paid on the accounts of the members of parliament. Members of parliament were called to Anita Among's house. Now, Anita Among is supposed to be the uh, speaker of parliament. But they were called to Anita Among's house. You know, many of them were told, oh, come in a disguised way, put on a hat, put on a mask, come on a border border, etc. And they went there. Now, these are members of parliament. Of course, I'm not going to name them. They, they uh, gave us this information. So we sat as a team, and I told my members of parliament what I'm telling the world now. And I always tell them what I say in closed doors is what I share with our... Um, with the population, with our voters, because part of our core values is uh, transparency. That's how we keep our integrity. So, you know, we discussed and we agreed that it was immoral. Those that had received that money told us they had been tricked. However, we agreed, all agreed, it was not an order for me. We agreed that this is immoral, this does not represent our values, this is anti-people. And for those that had received that money, we agreed that they would take it back. We even gave ourselves and timelines. And have all of them taken it It was not it a back. deadline. Mm -hmm. It was not a deadline. We gave ourselves timelines, and I, gave it, I left it to the uh, leadership of parliament. We even went ahead to tell our members of parliament that, I mean, this is between them and the people. I've been out of the country. I'm yet to uh, follow up on that. But I will say that this is a moral question. This is a moral question that, at the end of the day, goes between the people that they represent and the members of parliament. As a leader, I can only show the way, but I cannot drag everybody along the way. At the end of the day, like we've been saying, we are servant leaders and we are accountable to our people. But we've been encouraging the population not to leave it to us, to hold us accountable, all of us, to hold their leaders accountable and question them. When they were trying to change the constitution, we told the population, task your member of parliament, visit your member of parliament, tell them not to touch the constitution. That is when Museveni gave soldiers to every member of parliament to protect them from the voters. Now, I continue to tell the population that hold your MPs accountable, because at the end of the day, we can only tell them or tell you what's right, but, but you are the masters, you are the bosses, so hold your members of parliament accountable like you hold us accountable. Okay, all yeah. right, so speaking of uh, servant leaders, we do have the arts teachers and yeah. the teachers of primary. On Monday, a pronouncement was made indicating that teachers have called off the strike that has been running for three weeks after meeting the president. Where is the gap that should be bridged to see that the occurrence of such an event does not resume after the grace period, but more so related events do not happen in the near future with the other public servants in Uganda? Well, it's a sad thing. First of all, I want to state that we stand with the teachers, we stand with the art teachers. The teachers have a, a, a slogan that the nation is because we are. And because we are, the nation is. And that's very true. We all are what we are, largely because of our teachers. Mm -hmm. The more dedicated a teacher, and the more dedicated and passionate a teacher is, the nation turns out to be. It's unfortunate that every time uh, teachers, like many other you know, uh, uh, societies of uh, civil servants, it's unfortunate that every time they come together, General Museveni finds ways of drawing a wedge between them and dividing them. This has happened with the medical workers, it has happened with the tax operators, it has happened with many other communities. Now it's with the teachers. You know, I saw that the teachers had striked, and rightly so, and the whole world was standing with them. Unfortunately, another, you know, branch of UNATO showed up and said, ah, for us, now we've agreed with General Museveni and we're resuming work. But what did you agree on? What was solved? Of course, like I said, uh, they always uh, uh, create a counter, you know, uh, organization to that that is standing for values. That's why they will create a counter DP, a counter UPC, a counter NUP, etc., etc., etc. Now, going to the 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 the, uh, the discrimination, it's very, very, very unfortunate. I am speaking here because I am an arts product. You are an arts product. But let's go to uh, General Museveni himself. What did he study? Sciences? Let's go to his wife. What did she study? If she studied anyway. 
you know, what is she? But she is the minister for education. His entire cabinet, what did they study? The reason why they banned political education, the reason why they uh, are trying to alter all Ugandan history to make sure, according to Museveni and the education system in Uganda, Uganda history begins in 1986. The reason why they are trying to change all that is because they don't want leaders to prop up. Dictators all over the world, the Mussolinis, uh, the Hitlers, they've banned political education and arts because arts creates people like me, okay, that are going to give them headache. They'd rather see doctors uh, confined in their hospitals and scientists confined in their libraries, you know. That's why they are trying to clamp down. How do you tell me that one side of, 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 of the learning uh, system is wrong and therefore unnecessary and therefore should be deliberately disempowered. I disagree with that. I think it's wrong. I think it is against the future of Uganda and it should be stopped as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Now, going back to the party national unity platform, the leadership looks to be in contention with Honorable Chiwalaman Konge, who is seemingly tied to reclaim the throne of the party. Allegations are that your leadership wasn't rightfully elected, and according to the other party of Chiwalama. And so we want to find out from you, Honorable Chagulani, what is the illumination on this matter currently? Uh, Priscilla, the leadership of NUP is not a throne. Okay, <laughs> that, that you should change that. And of course, Mzee um, Chibarama, I would not be quick to refer to him as honorable, you know, because we are defined by our deeds. However, again, I'm not quick to castigate or condemn uh, Mr. Chibarama. As I grow up, I've learned not to be quick to condemn people. Not everybody has similar resilience. Some people have breaking points. We all have breaking points, only that some of us stubbornly tend to extend our breaking points. Mm -hmm. This TV, you know, aired a news clip when uh, Mr. Chibalama was saying he was kidnapped by the regime, kept in Nimbali, beaten so much. I personally spoke to him in court when he was forced to come and uh, testify against NUP and against his own self, you know. He was in court and almost broke down and cried and said, I wish I was free, because he was not free. And after that, after court ruled uh, that the allegations that he was forced to present in court were actually wrong, and uh, court showed you the, the true leadership of the NUP, Mr. Chibalama went ahead to have various interviews and said the media coached us, I mean, the, 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 the state coached us to lie against Chagulanyi and the NUP. This is known. Of course, later on, when he falls sick, you saw how the military took charge of him and everything. But like I said, everybody has a breaking point. Of course, when they see that their lives are in danger, they are very easily compromised. It is either money or terror that compromises our people. And yes, Mr. Chibalama was compromised by the state clearly and openly. So that is a state program trying to, you know, delay and derail us. But this is not the first time. The dictators behave that way. Um, in uh, Zimbabwe, uh, the MDC party was taken over by the regime, and uh, my friend uh, Nelson Chamisa had to, you know, to, oh, to, 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 to come up with another party immediately. Mm -hmm. This has happened everywhere, but particularly here in Uganda, you see how we, uh, DP was divided when Museveni had the good DP and the bad DP. You saw what happened to the UPC uh, when he propped up uh, one side against uh, uh, another. And this is what he's trying to do with the NUP. This is a state effort, but it will fail. Because for us, it's not just the name of the party. It is the people in the beginning, in the process, and in the end, we will be people power, because people power is our power. NUP is the political wing of people power, and it's a party that we are in firm control of. It's a party that uh, people have developed trust in, and it's a party that we will lead, and hopefully we lead Uganda 
to freedom. Okay. All right. Let's move on to another national matter, yeah. which is the financial year 2022-2023 that has kicked off as of 1st July. Uh, the commodity basket right now is expensive. Yeah. The food basket is mm. equally expensive. And so we see this coming from the stream of you know, COVID-19 and then the Ukraine-Russian war. But still, the country passed a budget of approximately 48 trillion Ugandan shillings, and you watch the allocation of uh, the funds to different sectors. In your view, is this the budget that is going to drive the country forward, or is it the budget that is going to cause acceleration of this economy forward? Yeah, thank you, Priscilla. Uh, for, for correction, it's not approximately 48 trillion. It's over. 48 trillion because it's 48.1 trillion. Um, unfortunately, very unfortunately, the budget is always, you know, prepared not to benefit Ugandans, but to keep them in slavery and to keep Museveni comfortable. Mm -hmm. What are the priorities in this budget? Just pick a few. Uh, you know, forget that even that, uh, on top of that, they are always known supplementary budget, you know, but one trillion alone goes to Museven and his family for maintenance, you know. It compares with the purported parish model, which also has its own challenges. It's not uh, uh, fairly distributed, you know, with all these, uh, um, uh, with more than 10,000 parishes in Uganda, you know, it's one trillion equal to Museveni's household. But again, like I said, it's also not uh, uh, evenly distributed because you'll find, uh, for example, in urban areas, one parish has a population that is over 10 or even 20 or even 30 times the parish of uh, rural areas. This, uh, in my view, is just a political tool for General Museveni. Our budget is not... Uh, in line with, uh, with uh, um, the needs that we have. Quick uh, example, agriculture has been and continues to be our sustainability. How much money was allocated to the agriculture sector? Around 500-something billion. So the budget, like I said, is not prepared to benefit the people of Uganda, but to benefit General Museveni and ensure that he holds them in control. Okay. Yeah. All right. The country is also grappling with the worst inflation since 2008 and world over. The president said nothing can currently be done about it. Do you concur with the president? And if not, what would be the solutions from your bird's eye view? Um, I disagree with Museveni for the reasons he gives. Of course, just like uh, he has uh, been conveniently using COVID-19 as reason for whatever he does, now, the best convenient excuse is the war on Ukraine. But commodity prices started shooting up way before November 2021, way before the war on Ukraine. So I disagree. There is certainly something that can be done. Cut wasteful spending. You know, cut wasteful spending. Let us use our money uh, where we, we, it benefits our people. Why spend a trillion, you know? on yourself, cut wasteful spending. And we also proposed, uh, you know, a few uh, proposals. I addressed the nation uh, recently. I'll refer you to that because I wouldn't want to spend more, most of this interview because we are likely touching this and that. But I'll refer you to my communication uh, for more technicalities. The people are asking, if you are president, what would you do about the current fuel prices that are spiking day in and day out? The fuel prices... Like I said, I gave a uh, brief, you, I'll, I'll just be brief on this program. Uh, fuel prices are high. We have a law, we have a, 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 a petroleum um, act here in Uganda, a petroleum supplies act, which empowers the commissioner for petroleum supplies to rein to, to in, you know, the government can't do something about that. First of all, let it be transparent with the people. Let the people be educated in order to appreciate the changes and the fitting. Um, let, let, let the government shine a light on, on, on the fuel prices. One, 
split it into three, because government can take control uh, in that. There's a, a cost of price of a liter of, of fuel on our borders. Um, I would say it's probably 200, uh, 2,800 or thereabout, you know. There is the tax that's levied on it, and then there's that gap of profit. And altogether, it uh, builds the cost of petroleum. Now, uh, the commissioner for petroleum supplies can rein in and control and, make, and, and, and say, OK, this is the cost of a liter of fuel by the time it gets to our borders. This is the tax that is on the uh, fuel per liter. And then, guys, this should be the, 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 the gap of profit. And there, the population can be cushioned. Unfortunately, the regulator who probably has the same name as many that are controlling, uh, uh, it's the same group, it's a cabal, you know. These are the same people regulating and the, the same people in the fuel business. So they will not regulate, you know, because they want to have a large profit margin. And that profit margin is the problem. You understand what I mean? Because they want, and they are not even letting the population know the details of that because they want to, to, to exploit you in ignorance. Take Kenya, for example. Kenya goes as far as the Arab countries to negotiate a good price for their people. Uganda had the highest cost of fuel, still has the highest cost of fuel in the East African region. Why? Because for us, we are seen as Abateja. In South Africa, they call them Abateja. You know, we are seen as, as people that are manipulatable, and the more we're kept in, in, in the dark, is the more they manipulate us. So the fuel cost has continued to go high. It has continued to go high because it is deliberately high. The higher it is, the more benefit for these people. They and the fuel business. So whenever the cost is not high, they can even deliberately make it high. You understand? Mm -hmm. We don't, they, they don't open up about the taxes, and they don't control the profit margin. And not just the, the, not just the, 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 the fuel. Now, that's uh, my proposal for the fuel. Of course, we propose that they should also stop the fuel tracking because it only delays uh, the trucks on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the border and also adds an extra cost, which is useless. It was only useful 15 years ago. I also proposed that uh, because now fuel... Uh, makes it terrible for all commodities altogether. But food, food is a problem. For us who live in urban areas, for the people living in the ghetto, food is a problem. People survive on chapati. You understand? They survive on Rolex, on Chikomando, but they, well, the cost of wheat is through the roof. The cost of uh, crude, veg uh, the, the crude vegetable oil is through the roof. We propose that they scrap uh, taxes on crude vegetable oil and on wheat. And of course, uh, there are questions, okay, now if we just remove the, 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 the taxes on uh, uh, crude vegetable oil and wheat, where, 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 how do we uh, uh, f uh, uh, patch up those holes? Mm -hmm. There's a huge, huge, um, um, what do they call that? Um, that, 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 that th there's a huge, um, the, the, the budget that's not, what's that word? I hate technical words. The, 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 the budget that's not, that's not talked about. Mm -hmm. the, the, okay. Okay. The, the budget that the general must have any tax and it's not talked about, you know. Cut that. Mm -hmm. Cut that budget because we are not at war. Cut the budget of security. We are not at war. Let it fit in there. When the situation balances, then we'll go ahead as a country. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, finally, Honorable Chagulanyi, as we close here in morning at the NTV, uh, we want to find out from you what is your send-off message to the people of Uganda? <laughs> the people of Uganda, you are on your own. You are on your own. The people ruling over you don't care. The classified budget, that's the word. They care about themselves. 
they put more money in the classified budget, you will not know what it has done, but there will be no medicine in the hospitals. The children won't go to school, and everybody is going to face it. I want to send a message to the teachers. When the doctors were protesting, you were quiet. When the border borders are protesting, you're quiet. When these ones are protesting, you're quiet. Now it's your time. Soon it will be on the artists. The other day it will be on... I mean, all of us are in trouble. We are under occupation. The people that are ruling over us, they don't care whatsoever. They're just prolonging their rule over our country. Every day that they get is an additional day. Every day that they get is an additional day. So we are on our own. The, the one and only solution to our problems is removing dictator Museveni. Uganda's problem is one. It is Museveni and his family. They look at us as a farm. They look at us as property. And until we remove those people, we shall continue suffering. The Congolese, the Zaireans had to remove Mobutu Seseko to be okay. Okay? The Germans had to remove Hitler to be okay. The Russians had to remove Mussolini to be okay. We have to remove Museveni to be okay. This, if we don't do everything else, is just a symptom. We'll just be touching this and touching that and touching the other. But at the end of the day, we are being ruled by a tyrant that does not care, that looks at us as his farm. So it won't help us to just cry and cry and cry. Let's get together and make sure that we break this dictatorship. That is the only way you teachers are going to live in dignity and do your job in dignity. This is the only way you journalists are going to do your job in dignity. Otherwise, they will continue beating you up for covering things that you're supposed to cover. ETC, ETC. So Ugandans, the only solution is to stop the Museveni dictatorship, to return power to the people so that leaders be there deliberating in the benefit of the people. As for Museveni, he sits down with his family over dinner and discusses Uganda okay. and then imposes that on the parliament, which puppet kind of parliament will just rubber stamp that and we live in circles. Thank you so much, Honorable Chagul. And you Thank said, you very uh, much. And uh, you've heard it from the horse's mouth. Uh, he put it in musical words to Junet come together. And it reminds us of our, you know, when it comes to Uganda, it's all about God and our country. Yeah. So it should be collective efforts to move this country forward and to have things, methods, strategies that are going to accelerate Uganda for all of us. Thank you so much for watching Morning at NTV Thursday's edition.